G'day everyone, Cautious Pancake here, doing another horde based build video in 7 Days to Die. Today's video is part 1 of a 3 part series on a base I've dubbed the Thresher, due to its over the top use of blade traps. Ironically, part 1 will also not feature any blade traps. Instead, we'll run through the main structure build process and look at the pathing the base uses to keep your brands on the inside of your noggin. At the end, we'll give a day 21 horde a shot to test things out. Enough chat from me though, let's get into the build. Starting off, we're going to build a 4x4 vertical wall, and attached to the base of that, we're going to build a 13x4 slab, which will end up being the foundation of our base. And here's what it looks like once the foundation's complete. Next, we're going to knock out four blocks and replace them with ramps for the entrance and the exit to the base. This is the exit, and this will be the entrance. Here's what it looks like once you're done. After that, we're going to start the end wall, which will be seven blocks high on top of the foundation. And here's what it looks like when that's done. And just to check that it was seven blocks from the foundation, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After that, it's time to build the wall on the left hand side. Same again, seven blocks high on top of the foundation. Here's what that looks like once we're done. After that, the same on the right. And once that's done. Next, we need to fill in the gaps at the base exit, leaving a two block high doorway for the zombies to run out of. on this side, swing around, and do the same on the other side. This is what it looks like from the inside, from where we are now. Then we need to create the entrance for us to get inside the, the base. So we're going to put a ladder up the side, some ladder blocks, go up a couple of blocks so that zombies can't make it, and go up three, and then knock out two blocks for the door. We're also going to add our access to the roof. If I could jump, there we go, and here we are up to the roof. Once on the roof, we can start adding in some blocks. We're going to start by putting some plates at the edge to give us something to build on. Pop these down the other way. At this end and the other. And then we're going to fill in with some bars. Here's what things should be looking like at this point. Next, we're going to go and add in our door for our entryway. I'm going to use just a basic iron door. And then we need to put in our shooting platform, walkway, gantry, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to use iron bars again. I'm going to put them here, somewhere, which 
try and get the height right, which I have failed miserably. Let's try that again. There we go. And then we're just going to extend these all the way along from this point forward until a couple of blocks shy of the entrance. Next up, we build one of the most important parts of the base, and that's the ramp that forces the zombies to run in a loop. So we go in six blocks from the end, and then build a two block high ramp using the ramp and basic cube blocks. And on top of that, we're gonna get a special little piece, which is the quarter plate triangle. Plate one quarter triangle, sorry. I'm gonna put two blocks like this, then we're gonna put the next block up one and rotate it around the other way, like so, so that the zombies think that that's a step up that they can jump. But the combination of the wider gap in the middle and the iron bars on top will actually force the zombies to fall down into this part and then run out our exit and back to the start. Just to demonstrate, I'm going to have a go. You see that jumping through isn't really possible and we end up back to the bottom. Now in case you saw my incredible lack of jumping ability before, we'll get an actual zombie to test this. So it's spawning in an Arlene. And I don't know where she's going. Uh, okay. And there's the jump, and down she goes. Hops up. Runs back around. Has another go. Goes in to destroy anything. Should have a few whacks there. And comes to her senses and tries again. As you can see, didn't make the jump, gonna try again. So whilst the base will take a little bit of damage on some of these blocks, it shouldn't be a lot as most of the time they just continue to loop over and over again. Thank you, Arlene. Now if you were wondering why we built the first wall at a different size, well here it is. We're going to extend this out on the edge, three blocks, and inside here we are going to put our power generator and first two electric fences. Run some blocks around the edge like this, fill in the top two, and let's add a couple of doors. I'm going to keep using my iron doors. You can use whatever you like. And inside here, let's go and put two electric fences and a generator, which I will need to go and grab. So need an engine and some gas. Throw this down. Excuse me a second. And put the engine in and fill it up. Now let's wire these two up. And from there, I'm going to wander down the other end and put in two more electric fence posts. But these two we're going to put upside down. And the reason being is that we want the electric fence wire to always be at the right height to shock any zombie that's running down the base of the run or up the ramp and never be out of contact with the electric fence line. So they go upside down and now we need to wire it up. While I do that, one thing I'd like to point out is that whilst this gives 
less redundancy in that there's only four fence posts and some idiot left the power on, while it's got less redundancy in terms of the number of fence posts, the advantage that it gives is that the zombies are always in contact with the electric line and therefore are slowed down more, plus it means that we can repair these two posts from on top of the gantry. And here's the finished product with a few wooden spikes added on top for any vultures that we might get in our day 21 horde test. Alright, we're inside now with a few extra lanterns so that we can see what we're doing. And let's jump forward to day 21. Where are they? Here they come. I've given myself a pistol and a double barrel shotgun. And as you can see, Doctor Who follows the loop ramp quite nicely. I've also given myself a pile of ammunition, given that in this version of the base, we're going to have to do all of the killing ourselves from up top. That's going to change in part two, but for early game, where you may not have access to steel, this is how we want to get things set up. As you can see, the electric fences do a pretty good job of keeping all the zombies near the front. And of course, as we've seen, anything that does get past, like the dogs in particular, will just continually run laps until we either shoot them or the fence is finishing them off. From up here, you could use any particular weapon, it doesn't have to be a pistol, whatever you've got access to. Long as ranged, obviously. This is not a melee friendly base. I also haven't set this up at this stage really for using Molotovs, but you absolutely could. If your accuracy is good, wander forward to the front here and throw down some Molotovs while they're all grouped up at the front. From time to time, one of the things you do need to do is run back here and repair the electric fences. Otherwise, they're going to run a bit rampant. For repair, you need forged iron and electric parts. like the next wave. not really doing a lot of damage to the base itself, just generally walking along, because most of them haven't had a chance to go through the loop and therefore haven't gone in to destroy anything. Get the shot of your whack. Nah. Back to the pistol. that out a bit so let's run back and make sure these aren't going to fail and 
about an hour and a half into the whole night. And almost 200 rounds of ammunition gone. Also going to need to repair that pistol in a second. Keep plugging away at these guys. We are set to 64 zombies, but because of the current game stage, we're probably not getting the full count. first cop. Again one of the design features of this base because of the high walls and limited entryway they don't really get a good look at you so you don't spit much. Feels like we should be fairly well through the hole. Look up. Okay. Couple extra for just good measure. out again. Just the dogs left. Not sure how that hit. And I think we're done. Well there you have it guys. Fortnite's done with very little damage to the base and very little risk to ourselves. Overall, I think it performed really, really well. So big thanks from me for watching, and I hope I'll see you back here for parts two and three of this series, where we add more and more blade traps and look to take on true endgame Horde Knight. Until then, have a good one.